The clinking of silverware against fine china echoed through the dining room, punctuated by the occasional polite cough or forced chuckle. My smile felt tight as I surveyed the scene before me. My family gathered for our weekly dinner, a ritual that once filled me with warmth but now felt like a charade. So, Derek, I began, my voice cutting through the tension like a knife, how are things at the office? Derek, my son-in-law, paused mid-bite, his fork hovering in the air. With a carefully crafted smile, he replied, Couldn't be better, Lorraine. The team's been knocking it out of the park. My gaze shifted to my daughter Elise, who beamed with pride. Seeing her devotion to this man made my stomach churn. If only she knew the truth. As the conversation drifted to more mundane topics, I excused myself, feigning a need to freshen up. In truth, I needed a moment to collect my thoughts. The hall bathroom provided a brief respite, Shrove, but the raised voices from the dining room soon shattered the illusion of peace. Can't keep this up forever. Derek's hushed tone carried an unmistakable edge. We need to act fast before she catches on. My breath caught in my throat as realization dawned. He was plotting something, and it involved my late husband's company, the business I had poured my heart and soul into preserving. Pressing my ear against the door, I strained to make out Elise's muffled response. But, Mom, she'll never agree to it. Then we don't give her a choice. Derek snapped. This is our chance to secure our future, and I won't let anyone stand in our way. Not even your mother. The weight of his words hit me like a ton of bricks. My own daughter conspiring against me with her husband, the man I had once welcomed into our family with open arms. Tears stung my eyes as I fought the urge to burst through the door and confront them. Stealing myself, I took a deep breath and rejoined them, plastering on a smile that belied the turmoil raging within me. As I caught Derek's satisfied smirk, a newfound determination took root. He had no idea what he was up against. This was war, and I would do whatever it took to protect my husband's legacy, even if it meant going against my own flesh and blood. The days following that fateful dinner crawled by, each one more excruciating than the last. Elise remained distant— her once warm demeanor replaced by a guarded chill that cut deeper than any knife. Derek, on the other hand, strutted around with an infuriating smugness, as if he'd already won. I knew I had to act fast, but I needed proof of his misdeeds, something concrete to shatter his carefully constructed facade. That's when I stumbled upon the financial records hidden in his study. Elise, you need to see this, I urged, thrusting the incriminating documents into her hands. Her brow furrowed as she scanned the pages. What is all this? Evidence that your precious husband has been embezzling from the company. I spat, my anger boiling over. He's been bleeding us dry for years, right under our noses. Elise recoiled as if struck, her expression a mixture of disbelief and hurt. Mom, how could you accuse Derek of something like that? These numbers, they must be a mistake. A mistake? I let out a bitter laugh. Open your eyes, Elise. That snake has been playing us both for fools. Derek chose that moment to saunter in, his eyes narrowing as he took in the scene before him. What's going on here? Your wife seems to have uncovered your little secret, I snarled, thrusting the documents at him. Care to explain yourself? For a fleeting moment, his mask slipped, revealing the ruthless predator lurking beneath, but just as quickly it was replaced by a look of feigned innocence. Lorraine, you're not making any sense, he said, his voice dripping with false concern. These are just routine financial reports. I've done nothing wrong. Don't lie to me, I roared, all pretense of civility abandoned. I know you've been bleeding the company dry, and I won't let you get away with it. Derek's veneer finally cracked, his true colors bursting forth in a torrent of rage. You stupid old woman. You have no idea what you're up against. He turned to Elise, his eyes pleading. Sweetheart, you have to believe me. Your mother's lost her mind. Elise stood frozen, her gaze darting between us, torn between the man she loved and the mother who had raised her. In that moment, I saw the first glimmer of doubt flicker across her face. I... She faltered, her voice small and uncertain. I don't know what to believe anymore. With a contemptuous sneer, Derek wrapped his arm around her shoulders, pulling her close. Don't worry, my love. We'll get through this together, no matter what it takes. As they turned and left the room, I sank into the nearest chair, my hands trembling with a potent mix of rage and sorrow. The battle lines had been drawn, and
and there would be no turning back. Derek had made his move, but he had no idea the lengths I was willing to go to protect what was mine. This was far from over. In the days that followed, the once warm atmosphere in my home had turned icy, with tension seeping through every nook and cranny. Elise avoided me like the plague, her loyalty to that snake Derek unwavering, despite the evidence of his deceit. I knew I couldn't take him on alone, not with the resources at his disposal. That's when fate intervened in the form of Jenna Williams, a young hotshot lawyer with a chip on her shoulder and a vendetta against Derek. "'Mrs. Robertson, we need to talk,' she announced, barging into my living room one afternoon without preamble. I eyed her warily, taking in her no-nonsense demeanor. "'And you are?' Jenna Williams, attorney at law. She thrust out a manicured hand, her grip firm and unyielding. I represent a client who was defrauded by your son-in-law in a business deal gone wrong. My interest piqued, I motioned for her to take a seat. I'm listening. For the next hour, Jenna laid out a damning case against Derek, detailing his web of lies, manipulation, and illegal activities. By the time she finished, my blood was boiling. That snake has been playing us all. I growled, slamming my fist on the coffee table. He needs to be stopped. Jenna's eyes gleamed with a predatory light. That's where you come in, Mrs. Robertson. With your insider knowledge and my legal expertise, we can bring Derek down once and for all. I hesitated, the weight of her proposition hanging heavy in the air. Could I really go to such lengths, even if it meant turning against my own daughter? As if sensing my hesitation, Jenna leaned forward, her gaze intense. Look, I get it. Family loyalty is a powerful thing. But ask yourself this. How far is Derek willing to go to protect his interests? Do you really think he has your daughter's best interests at heart? Her words struck a nerve, reigniting the fury that had been simmering within me. Derek was a cancer, slowly poisoning everything he touched. If I didn't act, he would destroy not only the company, but my family as well. Squaring my shoulders, I met Jenna's gaze head-on. All right, Miss Williams, I'm in. Let's take that son of a bitch down. A feral grin spread across her face as she extended her hand. It's a pleasure doing business with you, Mrs. Robertson. As our hands clasped, sealing our unholy alliance, I felt a renewed sense of determination coursing through my veins. Derek might be a formidable foe, but he had no idea what he was up against. Together, Jenna and I would expose his lies and bring him to his knees, no matter the cost. The game was on, and I intended to play for keeps. The days melted into weeks as Jenna and I worked tirelessly to gather evidence against Derek. Every phone call, every late-night meeting, carried the weight of our mission, to expose his misdeeds and bring him to justice, no matter the cost. We need more, Jenna growled, slamming her fist on the table laden with financial records and incriminating documents. This is damning, but not enough to guarantee a conviction. I pinched the bridge of my nose, exhaustion weighing heavy on my shoulders. What else do you need? I've given you everything I could find. Jenna leveled her steely gaze at me. We need a smoking gun, something irrefutable that proves his intent to defraud the company. As if on cue, my phone buzzed with an incoming call from an unknown number. Frowning, I answered cautiously. Hello? Mrs. Robertson. It's me. The tremulous voice belonged to Derek's assistant, Tina. I have something you need to see. Within the hour, Tina was seated across from us, her hands trembling as she slid a flash drive across the table. This contains copies of emails and financial records detailing Mr. Winslow's illegal dealings with offshore accounts. Jenna snatched up the drive, her eyes alight with a predatory gleam. This is it. The evidence we need to bury that bastard. Tina wrung her hands, her gaze darting between us. I couldn't stand by and let him destroy the company any longer, not after everything you and Mr. Robertson built. Reaching across the table, I covered her hand with my own, a surge of gratitude washing over me. Thank you, Tina. You're a brave woman. She offered a weak smile before rising to her feet. Just make sure he pays for what he's done. As the door clicked shut behind her, Jenna let out a low whistle. She's got guts. I'll give her that. We all do what we must. I murmured, my thoughts drifting to Elise and the sacrifices I was willing to make to protect her future. Jenna's voice snapped me back to the present. Now that we have what we need, it's time to take that snake down once and for all. The days that followed were a whirlwind of strategy sessions and meticulous planning. 
We knew Derek wouldn't go down without a fight, so we had to be prepared for anything. Every move, every contingency, was calculated with surgical precision. As the crucial board meeting loomed, the tension was thick enough to cut with a knife. Derek remained oblivious to our efforts, strutting around with his usual arrogant bravado. Little did he know, his world was about to come crashing down around him. The night before the meeting, I found myself staring out the window, watching the moonlight dance across the backyard where Elise used to play as a child. So much had changed, so many bonds frayed in the pursuit of justice. But as I clutched the damning evidence in my hands, I knew there was no turning back. Derek had made his bed, and now he would lie in it. Come morning, the game would reach its climax, and I intended to be the last one standing. The familiar hum of the office should have been comforting, but as I strode down the hallway, briefcase in hand, a sense of trepidation gnawed at me. Today was the day, the culmination of weeks of planning, strategizing, and sleepless nights. Morning, Mrs. Robertson. Derek's cheerful voice cut through the din like a hot knife through butter. He fell into step beside me, that ever-present smirk plastered across his face. You're looking radiant as always. I suppressed a shudder, forcing a tight smile. Derek, I trust you're prepared for today's meeting? Of course, he replied, his tone dripping with false sincerity. I always come prepared. If only he knew the truth, that this very meeting would be his undoing. Jenna and I had spent countless hours rehearsing, ensuring every detail was accounted for, every contingency planned for. As we rounded the corner, I caught sight of Elise hovering near the conference room door. Her brow furrowed when she spotted us, and I could see the conflict raging behind her eyes. Mom, she began, her voice catching in her throat. Can we talk for a minute? Derek shot her a warning glance, but I raised a hand, silencing him. Of course, dear. Ushering her into a nearby office, I studied her drawn features, my heart aching at the turmoil etched into her face. I don't know what to believe any more, she whispered, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. Derek swears he's innocent, but there's just something off about the way he's been acting lately. I longed to pull her into my arms, to shield her from the harsh realities we were about to face, but I knew this was a battle she needed to fight on her own. Listen to your instincts, Elise. I murmured, cupping her cheek. Deep down, you know the truth. She opened her mouth to respond, but a sharp rap on the door cut her off. Five minutes to go, Jenna called out, her voice laced with urgency. With a trembling sigh, Elise stepped back, her expression hardening into a mask of determination. We should get in there. As we filed into the conference room, the tension was palpable. Derek held court at the head of the table, flanked by his loyal cronies, but as my gaze swept across the assembled faces, I took heart in the handful of allies Jenna and I had managed to turn, men and women who had seen through Derek's lies and were ready to take a stand. Shall we begin? Derek's voice boomed, snapping me back to reality. This was it, the moment of truth. With a subtle nod to Jenna, I steeled myself for the battle ahead. No more games, no more deception. It was time for Derek Winslow to face the consequences of his actions. Come hell or high water, I would see him burn. The conference room descended into a tense silence as Derek launched into his opening remarks, his smooth baritone masking the venom that lurked beneath. I fought the urge to roll my eyes at his blatant attempts to cast himself as the wronged party, the victim of some grand conspiracy. Jenna caught my eye from across the table, a silent signal passing between us. It was time. If I may interject, I called out, my voice ringing with a confidence I didn't quite feel. All eyes swiveled in my direction, and I could sense Derek's irritation simmering beneath the surface. Mrs. Robertson, he drawled, his tone laced with forced patience. I was under the impression this was a board meeting, not a therapy session for your delusions. A ripple of unease swept through the room, but I held my ground, leveling my gaze at the man who had once been like a son to me. I think it's time we address the elephant in the room, Derek. His eyes narrowed, but I pressed on, nodding at Jenna to cue the projector. For years, you've been bleeding this company dry through a complex web of offshore accounts and dummy corporations. As the damning financial records flickered across the screen, a hush fell over the attendees. Even Derek's staunchest allies shifted uncomfortably in their seats, the weight of the evidence undeniable. 
Derek, however, maintained his composure, a derisive chuckle escaping his lips. Really, Lorraine? This is what you've resorted to? Slandering me with doctored documents and baseless accusations? I wouldn't be so sure about that. All heads swiveled as Tina, Derek's former assistant, stepped into the room, clutching a thick manila envelope. Derek's smug facade faltered, his eyes widening in a rare display of unguarded emotion. Tina, what is the meaning of this? The meaning, she said, her voice trembling but resolute, is that I can no longer be complicit in your crimes, Mr. Winslow. With a deft flick of her wrist, she upended the envelope, scattering its contents across the table. A damning trail of emails, bank statements, and ledgers, all bearing the irrefutable proof of Derek's illegalities. A deafening silence blanketed the room as the reality of the situation sank in. Derek's allies exchanged uneasy glances, their allegiances fracturing before our very eyes. Derek, for his part, had abandoned all pretense of civility. His handsome features contorted into a mask of rage as he rounded on me, spittle flying from his lips. You conniving old witch! How dare you turn my own people against me! Before anyone could react, Jenna was on her feet, her steely gaze boring into Derek's. That's enough, Winslow. The jig is up. We have more than enough evidence to bury you in criminal charges, embezzlement, fraud, money laundering, you name it. Derek's chest heaved with each ragged breath, his eyes darting around the room like a cornered animal. For a fleeting moment our gazes locked, and I saw the ugly truth laid bare. He was a soulless monster, consumed by greed and ambition. Then, as quickly as it had come, the moment passed. His shoulders slumped in defeat, and he sank back into his chair, the fight draining from his body. "'Well played, Lorraine,' he muttered, a twisted smile curling his lips. "'Well played, indeed.' As security swept in to escort him away, I caught Elise's eye from across the room. Tears streamed down her cheeks, her expression a heartbreaking mix of anguish and relief. In that moment, I knew the hard road to healing lay ahead. But as Derek's scathing glare bore into me one last time, I felt an odd sense of peace wash over me. The battle had been won, even if the war had exacted a heavy toll. Come what may, I would face it head on, my daughter by my side. Derek Winslow was gone, but the fight for my family's future had only just begun. The days following Derek's dramatic ousting were a whirlwind of activity. Lawyers, accountants, and investigators swarmed the office, meticulously untangling the intricate web of deceit he had woven. Meetings stretched late into the night as we grappled with the full extent of his misdeeds, the company teetering on the brink of financial ruin. Through it all, Elise remained a stoic presence by my side her unwavering support, a beacon of strength in the eye of the storm. Yet, I could see the toll it was taking on her, the sleepless nights, the occasional vacant stare when she thought no one was looking. She's holding up better than I expected, Jenna murmured one evening as we pored over the latest stack of financial reports. I followed her gaze to where Elise sat hunched over her laptop, her brow furrowed in concentration. For now, perhaps. But this is just the calm before the storm, as if on cue, the office door burst open, and Derek's lawyer, a slimy character named Roth, blustered in, his face flushed with indignation. "'This is an outrage,' he bellowed, slamming his briefcase onto the nearest desk. "'My client has been subjected to unlawful persecution and character assassination.' Jenna arched a perfectly sculpted brow, her expression one of bored indifference. "'Your client is facing multiple felony charges, Roth.' I'd say he's getting off easy. Roth opened his mouth to retort, but I cut him off with a sharp wave of my hand. Enough. We're not here to entertain your theatrics. State your business or show yourself out. His beady eyes narrowed, but he seemed to think better of further antagonizing us. Very well. My client is prepared to offer a plea deal in exchange for leniency. A derisive snort escaped Jenna's lips. And why, pray tell, would we entertain such a ludicrous proposition? Because, Roth sneered, my client has information that could prove detrimental to certain parties involved in his downfall. The implication hung heavy in the air, and I felt a chill run down my spine. Of course, the snake would try to slither his way out of the noose, even if it meant dragging others down with him. Elise had gone rigid at her workstation, her knuckles white as she gripped the edge of the desk. He's bluffing, she murmured, her voice laced with a desperation that belied her words. Roth's gaze shifted to her, his lips curling into a predatory smile. Am I, though? 
your dear husband has a knack for uncovering secrets, even those buried deepest in the family closet. A tense silence stretched between us, punctuated only by the faint ticking of the wall clock. Finally, Jenna broke the stillness, her voice a low, dangerous growl. Get out! Roth's eyes widened in mock surprise. You're not even going to hear me out? Who knows what skeletons Mr. Winslow might have unearthed in his quest for? I said, get out! Jenna was on her feet now, her finger jabbing the air mere inches from Roth's pallid face. Before I have you forcibly removed from the premises, for a moment it seemed he might press his luck, but something in Jenna's steely gaze must have given him pause. With a disdainful sniff, he snatched up his briefcase and turned on his heel, muttering curses under his breath as he stormed out. The office descended into a heavy silence, the weight of Roth's thinly veiled threats hanging over us like a dark cloud. Elise's shoulders trembled, and I moved to her side, enveloping her in a fierce embrace. "'It'll be all right, sweetheart,' I murmured, stroking her hair. "'That snake has no venom left to strike with.' Yet even as the words left my lips, a tendril of doubt snaked its way into my heart. Derek was a master manipulator, and if there was one thing I'd learned, it was never to underestimate his capacity for cruelty. The battle might have been won, but the war was far from over. The months that followed Derek's downfall were a whirlwind of legal battles and painstaking reconstruction. As the dust settled, the true extent of his betrayal became painfully clear. The company teetered on the brink of financial ruin, its coffers drained by his greed. Yet, through it all, Elise remained a steadfast presence by my side, her resilience a constant source of strength. Together, we pored over financial records, negotiated with creditors, and laid the groundwork for a fresh start, a future untainted by Derek's poisonous influence. I can't believe he had the audacity to threaten us like that, Elise muttered one evening as we pored over the latest batch of legal documents. I glanced up from the stack of papers, my lips pressed into a grim line. That's just who Derek is, a snake who'll strike at anyone foolish enough to get in his way. Well, he miscalculated this time. There was a steely glint in her eye, a newfound resolve that made my heart swell with pride. We're not going to let him slither back into our lives. As if on cue, Jenna breezed into the room, her hair tousled and a triumphant grin playing across her lips. Ladies, I come bearing good news. She brandished a thick manila envelope, letting it fall onto the desk with a dull thud. Derek's plea deal has been finalized. He's looking at a hefty prison sentence, plus financial restitution to the company. A collective sigh of relief escaped our lips, the weight of months of uncertainty finally lifting from our shoulders. Elise's smile was radiant her eyes shining with unshed tears of joy. It's really over, she breathed, her voice tinged with disbelief. Jenna's gaze softened as she regarded us both. Not quite. There's still the matter of rebuilding and moving forward. Her words hung in the air, a sobering reminder of the challenges that lay ahead. For so long, our sole focus had been on excising Derek's cancer from our lives. Now we faced the daunting task of healing the wounds he had inflicted of reclaiming what was rightfully ours. Yet as I looked around the office, the very heart of my late husband's legacy, I felt a renewed sense of determination coursing through my veins. This was our chance, our opportunity, to rise from the ashes and forge a brighter future. You're right, Jenna, I said, my voice ringing with conviction. It's time to roll up our sleeves and get to work. The days and weeks that followed were a whirlwind of activity as Elise and I threw ourselves into the task of rebuilding. We restructured departments, negotiated new contracts, and implemented stricter financial controls, all in an effort to safeguard against any future threats. Through it all, I marveled at the woman my daughter had become, strong, resilient, and fiercely loyal. The shadows of Derek's betrayal still lingered in her eyes, but they were overshadowed by a newfound sense of purpose, a determination to forge her own path. As the sun set on our first day of renewed operations, Elise and I lingered in the empty office, basking in the quiet sense of accomplishment. Can you believe it, Mom? she murmured, her gaze sweeping over the familiar surroundings. We actually did it. I wrapped an arm around her shoulders, pulling her close. Of course we did, sweetheart. We're Robertson women, tough as nails and twice as stubborn. Her musical laughter filled the air, and in that moment, 
I knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, we would face them together, united in our strength and resilience. As the last rays of daylight faded, casting long shadows across the room, I couldn't help but feel a sense of bittersweet nostalgia. So much had changed, so many battles fought and won. Yet in the end, it all came back to this, my family, my legacy, and the unwavering bond that held us together. Derek might have tried to tear us apart, but in doing so, he had only made us stronger. His poisonous influence was but a distant memory, a cautionary tale of what happens when greed and ambition consume a soul. As for us, well, we had a future to forge. One built on the foundations of love, loyalty, and an unbreakable spirit. And this time, nothing and no one would stand in our way.